six, a helping hand with your land. Neil from Essex here. Today we're out in the shop with some Kubota and Napa hydraulic oil filters. We're going to go and cut these things apart and show you some of the insides. Um, a lot of you seem to enjoy when we did this with engine oil filters. If you're interested in that, check back to our prior videos. Uh, we'll check and see how the hydraulic oil filters compare. To be perfectly frank, when I picked these up, I immediately could tell that the differences between these filters were not going to be as huge as what they were with the engine oil filters. When we went through the Napa Silver, Gold, and Platinum engine oil filters, it was very clear that none of the three were anywhere near in the same league as the OEM Kubota engine oil filter. The hydraulic filter, though, out of the box didn't feel quite that way. Um, picking this thing up and holding them side by side, we could immediately see the cans are basically exactly the same size. The weight differences that we found with the engine oil filters weren't there. These both weigh almost exactly the same. Uh, but once we cut them open, we did start to find a handful of differences. Um, first and foremost, the difficulty in cutting open the cans on the Napa filters um, is very, very different than the OEM. Uh, just like I found with the engine oil filters, I could go, say, two passes, three passes around the hydraulic filter with the oil filter cutter and pop this thing right open where I spun around and around and around on the Kubota OEM filters to get them to open up. So the cans on these are much, much heavier than what aftermarket oil filter cans may be. Um, and that gives you crush resistance. When you build up pressures and stuff inside of these cans or they take impact from the outside, there's just a lot more metal there to protect the guts of that filter. Uh, looking here at the ends that screw onto the engine, um, one thing that I like on all of these Kubota filters is that when they package these things, they put a little bit of oil on the gaskets and then shrink wrap the filter so it's covered in plastic. That keeps these gaskets wet and moist already. Whenever you install a filter onto the engine, they usually tell you, you know, put some oil on these things so they seat well. That's already done on these things. It lives in plastic, so everything is kind of wet and moist out of the box and ready to go, where the Napa filters weren't that way. Uh, when we flip the can open here on the Napa, the interesting thing that I found when taking this thing apart was how many parts I saw in common with the engine oil filter parts. So this piece right here, the anti-drain back valve that's here right on the inside of the holes, this rubber part looks exactly like the ones on the engine filters, so they're probably reusing that part here. Um, there's often adapter rings inside these Napa filters as well probably adapting the filter material to different can sizes depending on the application, but this is a part that you typically don't find inside of purpose-built filters. 
Pulling out the filter here itself, you'll see uh, some pleating and stuff around the inside, glued down into the bottom. The glue job is a little messy. And then in the bottom of the can, a spring. Um, there was some conversation about the function of these springs on our engine oil filter videos. These springs are here to provide pressure relief. It doesn't push the filter up against the top of the can. It's here so that if the oil flowing down through these ports is plugged up and this filter is not flowing, it allows the filter element to push into the bottom of the can and for the oil to bypass past the filter element. They'd rather your engine, or your transmission in this case, get some oil rather than none at all. So that's the function of the springs in the bottom of the cans. If I flip over here to the Kubota, um, again, again, my wet O-ring there on the top, uh, rubber anti-drain back valve, it's on the inside. If we compare these to each other, uh, they feel pretty similar to each other. When we did this with engine oil filters, the Kubota ones are a lot more pliable. That doesn't seem to be the case here quite so much. And then when we pull this guy out, we'll see pleating. And setting these guys side by side, again, just like the engine oil filters, you'll see there's a lot more pleating on the OEM filters than there are on the aftermarkets. When you have more pleating, typically it's gonna flow a little bit easier. There's more material there for the oil to pass through and it can last longer. There's more spaces in here for the thing to catch contaminants than there is inside of the uh, OEM or inside. I am no filter material expert here, just kind of trying to point out the differences to you. Uh, so the Kubota one here, when we feel the paper material that's in here, um, is more cardboard-like. It's thicker and it's heavier um, the, compared to the aftermarket one here that's a lot more papery. So not sure exactly what impact that's gonna have, uh, but the filtering properties of these are probably a little bit different from one another, um, just based on the, the paper material and stuff that's in here. So. Uh, one thing I did see here on the Kubota filter that I kind of question, if you look on the inside of the can here, uh, the Napa filter is using this spring. This is kind of what I'm used to seeing on the inside of a filter when I tear it apart. The Kubota one is using this curved bumper or spring-loaded piece, so I'm not sure if that's a, a functional difference there or not. So uh, in, in this case, like I said here, when we've done these before, um, not huge differences between these, but I wanted to show you the video, right, and not give guys the impression that we cherry pick this kind of information to only show the places where we feel like we come out on top. Um, to give a little bit more data behind this, um, I know <clears throat> just kind of having the conversation of filters, guys can come up with a lot of really opinionated responses on what to use and what's worked for them and that kind of thing. Um, I start out all these videos by saying that I drive a Ford vehicle without a Ford oil filter on it. A lot of guys I know buy filters for convenience reasons, um, but there are a lot of reasons in order to buy OEM. Um, one of the biggest ones is in warranty coverage. <clears throat> no warranties are not declined if you run somebody else's filter. For a manufacturer to do that, they have to provide you the maintenance items. They can't void warranties for using another manufacturer's filter. Um, but that said, when there are problems, and we do absolutely see problems with filters, um, we do see situations where there's finger pointing between manufacturers of, you know, a tractor company saying that this wasn't our filter, this wasn't our fault, go talk to your filter people, and the filter people not wanting to take responsibility as readily as they may lead you to believe. So that does happen in our shop, usually multiple times a year. It's not isolated incidents, um, so that is absolutely out there. Um, cost is often something that's brought up too when talking about filters. There's a perception out there that all parts at the dealership are really expensive. In this case, uh, absolutely not true. So this is my invoice right here from the Napa filter that I ordered, $16.99. 
um, and $7.95 to ship it here. The Kubota filter though is $12.19 from our online store and our shipping is a buck cheaper as well. So you would actually come out the better part of about $5 ahead by ordering your Kubota OEM filter. So just another reason to keep it in house. Don't make the assumption that these things are always like super overpriced at the dealership. We're very aware that this is a competitive market and so we price these consumable maintenance items really aggressively um, to win your business really, which is why we make these videos at the end of the day anyway. So uh, if you have any parts needs for your equipment and we can help or you have any service issues or sales needs as well, give us a call. Our parts hotline to pick up things like oil filters is 877-260-3528 or you can find all of these things online at messix.com.